What's going on, family? Welcome to another episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. And I am your gracious host. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite, making it pop off, making it do what it do. Glad to have everybody tuning in. We're going to chop up some real good game on today's show. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back broadcasting in Los Angeles. TariqRadio.com is where you can hear us for those who don't know. And if you're not following me on Twitter, follow me at Tariq Nasheed. We're going to chop up some real good game on today's show, as we always do. Not going to take calls. It's just going to be straight chopping it up all the way through. So we're going to take a real brief commercial break, ladies and gentlemen, and I mean very brief. And when we get back, we're going to chop up game right here on the Tariq Elite Radio Show. Hey, Soldier, the t-shirt brand inspired by ancient mysteries and modern style. Sign up for their t-shirt subscription and get a new exclusive shirt delivered every month automatically. Every shirt comes with a magazine that doubles as a poster, which describes the story and the history behind the design and the detail. It also comes with free stickers. Sign up for the t-shirt subscription right now. Tariq Radio listeners use the coupon code KFLEX. And get 50% off on your first month. That's CaseUltra.com. Again, that's CaseUltra.com. You know, one of my favorite songs back in the day from Usher is called Let It Burn. But what you don't want to let burn are your genitals. That's because casual sex is on the rise right now, and so are STDs. And yes, it can happen to you. You can't be so trusting with people out here. And you want to get yourself checked out. So you need to go to STDHomeTestKit.com and order their in-home STD test kit. You can test at home and you can get the results at home. And the results come in in less than 10 minutes. Plus you get instant HIV testing. No mailing off to the lab. No embarrassing trips to the STD clinic with other people you might know that's burning along with you. Go to STDHomeTestKit.com right now. Add the KFlex coupon code and get 25% off on your order. Step your game up and get your tickets to the Manhood and Game Seminar happening in Times Square, New York, August 31st, 2014. Speakers include dating coach Mr. Lacario, Royal Flyness, and Tell E. The seminar is designed to teach men about the dating game and about manhood. You're going to learn how to value yourself as a man, how to attract beautiful women, and how to stay focused and handle your business and make money and much, much more. Space is limited, so get your tickets now at MrLacario.com. And you spell that M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. You're now tuning into the king of game, Tariq Elite, on Tariq Elite Radio. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Tariq Elite Radio Show. I am your gracious host. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite. And we're going to chop up game. Don't forget, y'all, go to HiddenColorsFilm.com to get the Hidden Colors 3 DVD. And it is fully stocked back up on Amazon. We're fully stocked. Amazon has all the copies. It's right now, again, the number one documentary on Amazon. And again, you can get it on Amazon or you can get it directly at HiddenColorsFilm.com. Make your choice. We sent it out a little bit faster, but hey, get it at those two places. Just wherever you do, whatever you do, don't get the bootlegs. Do not get the bootleg. I had to check some dudes when I was out in New York last week. I had to step to some bootleggers out there and make sh- make a little um, withdrawal from their stash. Because we got to stop that bootlegging nonsense, man. We got to start supporting films like Hidden Colors 3 and all the rest of the Hidden Colors series because we need a parallel media outlet. That's very important that we have a parallel media outlet because they're coming out hard with propaganda within the dominant society. And I, I talked about this on Ustream Saturday, Sunday, this new movie they got coming out called Exodus where they have all of the ancient Egyptians lily white and I've been talking about this on my Facebook page I've been talking about this on my Twitter page and it's made me talking about this it's made international press there was an Australian newspaper talking about me and the movie the Exodus movie and talking about my criticism of it because I'm like really one of the only black public figures in the entertainment business who are who's speaking out against that so many black people are afraid to black people of note black people within the industry they're just so, so afraid to rock the boat but 
certain things you just you have to point out. That's just the fact that they have lily white actors playing ancient Africans. That's something that that goes beyond just taking creative license. That's propaganda. And what what happened on the IMDb page for the movie Exodus? All of the African kings and queens are played by white actors, but all the black actors who happen to be in the movie are playing thieves, lower class citizens, servants, and slaves. So this is beyond just creative license. This is propaganda. And it should be called out because my thing is I can't sit up and watch a movie for two hours with Sigourney Weaver playing an African queen. I just... And I just can't suspend disbelief that much to go for that. And again, we should speak out against stuff like that. And what we should do, because people are talking about boycotting and, and things of that nature. You boycott by creating a parallel industry where you can counter those images. Because they got one thing in the movie, one scene in the movie, and there's still shots of the movie they have the Sphinx. They're building the Sphinx, and the Sphinx has a European face. Now, we can. The Sphinx is still there in Africa. We see that it clearly does not have a European face, but again, the producers of the movie, they're just throwing out all types of logic and creating a white supremacist paradigm. So that has to be called out, because again, when black people play fictional characters that were designed for white actors, people in the dominant society usually lose their mind. So again, we got to understand how propaganda works and support the counter propaganda. Stuff like Hidden Colors, that's the the main reason why I do the Hidden Colors series to counter that type of nonsense. And again, when people say stuff like, oh man, these Exodus movies and these Noah movies, they're rewriting our history, man. We need to do our own movies. That's absolutely correct. But black consumers, you got to be in a mindset where you will actually support a black film because you can't have it both ways. Cats will complain that we need our own black films. But when we give out a black film that has positive images, niggas start talking about, oh, well, we need this for free. We need to spread this knowledge. It shouldn't even be about the money. We need to get it for free. Now, that's just coon plantation nigga talk. When dudes do that, trying to hide thievery and sabotage behind some type of higher honor perspective, that's just disingenuous. When they try to hide the fact that they're trying to bootleg movies and hide it behind some type of badge of honor and respect. That's no, that's fake hotep nigga shit that we really have to cut out. That needs to be cut out of the community. Doing sneak shit and then trying to act like you're doing it for some type of higher purpose. And I had Shahrazad Ali on the live Ustream show this Sunday talking about that, how she, she talks about how people try to bootleg her stuff and the minute they see her as old hotep queen sister mother and all that old stuff we, we gotta cut that nonsense out we got too much shysting going on within the community that has to be cleaned up so we can move forward everybody trying to sham each other you can't sham those in the dominant society because they set up a system where they won't allow you to do that so you try to sham the people next to you that bullshit is gonna have to stop we gotta get a code of conduct family we got to get a code of conduct and we need a what Dr. Umar Johnson said, a drop squad to enforce that code of conduct. We're going to have to start getting that drop squad within the black community because we really need a code of conduct. We can't have this anything goes. People make up the rules as they go along. We can't grow. We can't progress that way because the dominant society, they have a code of conduct. Let's be very clear. They have a specific code of conduct. And the dominant society, they do what I call, they play the white supremacist lottery on a daily basis. Now, some of you are saying, what's the white supremacist lottery? The white supremacy lottery, it's a daily drawing 
where those in the dominant society who are white supremacists or suspected white supremacists, they choose a black person at random to kind of make an example of, to kind of smack around and mistreat. Now, again, white supremacy goes on 24 hours a day because it's systematic. So it, it already goes on 24 hours a day. It's, it's a systematic practice that's on autopilot right now. It's systematic, it's institutionalized, meaning that whole groups of black people are funneled into the prison system, gentrified out of their neighborhoods, miseducated in the school system. I mean, this is a system that goes on every day, but also to make white supremacy more fun, they have a, a daily drawing on who's going to specifically get mistreated. And sometimes this happens to a, a, a lot of people. Sometimes it happens to one person. But there's there's always in the white supremacy lottery a black person who's going to be made an example out of. And the white supremacists, they understand this through osmosis. They understand this on a subconscious level, on a subliminal level. And that's how they communicate with each other because they have a code. They establish this code of conduct. And they know how to act accordingly to this code of conduct when they have the white supremacist lottery. So in the white supremacist lottery, just randomly, a black person can get killed. Just like our brother Eric Garner in New York. He was just standing on the corner. Cops came, choked him out. The white supremacist lottery picked him that day. The white supremacist lottery can pick you, your kid walking home with some Skittles in your pocket. You get killed and then the white supremacist lottery members make sure that the person who killed you gets acquitted. That's just them playing the white supremacist lottery. You're being sacrificed. They used to do it all the time during Jim Crow with, with lynchings. They would just pick a random black person, lynch them, or they'll pick random black people. For any reason, they'd make up the reason. That's the whole thing about the white supremacist lottery. They could make up the reason. It doesn't even have to be a real thing. We choose you one day to mistreat. Down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, back in the 1920s, they chose a whole city to play the white supremacist lottery on. We, we, we're going to use a fake rape, rape accusation to destroy this whole city of black people. So that's how the white supremacy lottery works. It works every day sometimes the situations are people who are well known sometimes unknown people but the white supremacist lottery can happen at will and it happens so again the white supremacists can feel okay we're in charge we're running things we're the gods of these black people this helps us understand this. This helps us reinforce this dynamic that we have a system where we could punish random black people at will. That is what the system of white supremacy is all about. We know we can punish groups of black people, but every now and then we want to just get one black person and just punish them and make an example simply because we can do it. That's the only reason why. Simply because they can do it. Now, what happens is that some black people try to avoid the white supremacy lottery because, see, all black people have a number on them. Your melanated skin is your number. So when they in the white supremacist society decide to call your number, they got you. They, they, it, it doesn't take anything for them to call your number. So black people understand that your number can be called. So what black people try to do in many cases, they try to conform. They'll try to kiss up to the dominant society. They'll try to butter up the dominant society or, or get in good with those in the dominant society by throwing other black people under the bus so that their number don't get called. That's the thing. A lot of black people try their best to do things to sometimes shuck and jive so their lottery number doesn't get called. 
but you don't understand how white supremacy works. The, the white supremacy lottery is very random. They don't give a damn who you are. If you're a black person, that lottery number is on you. No matter what you do, that number can be called at any given moment. The person who just learned that was Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith learned this, and he learned it the hard way. Now, for those who don't know, Stephen A. Smith, and we, we put him on the coon train before, he's a, a, an ESPN sports commentator. And, you know, a lot of ESPN shows are really geared towards black people because, like Brother Dr. Boyce Watkins says that a lot of black men are unemployed, so you have a lot of black men sitting at home watching television, especially sports shows, so a lot of these sports networks, they capitalize off that by putting black announcers and talking heads on these shows. So Stephen A. Smith, he's known for being kind of an outspoken person, but he's usually outspoken about black people. Stephen A. Smith has gained a reputation over the years of what I call soft shoe cooning, soft cooning. He says some real stuff here and there, but a lot of times he's been known to throw black people under the bus in order to get brownie points from his white colleagues and the white audience. He's real quick. Who He has been real quick, and I'm not going to call him a full-out coon because he hasn't been a full-out coon, but he's been soft cooning, and that's all it takes. Co-signing the white supremacists reprimanding black people Stephen A. Smith has said things like well black people have to carry themselves a little better if you just dress better the, you won't have so much racism come your way uh, Riley Cooper the, the white supremacist football player made some comments saying, saying the n-word calling black people nigger I think Stephen A. Smith was one of those people saying well if black people do it we call ourselves the N-word. We shouldn't get mad if they do it. He was one of them type of dudes. Just really making excuses for the white supremacists and throwing black people under the bus. And he's done this a lot of times and he's been highly criticized for this. I think he kind of co-signed Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban said some real slick stuff about black folks. And I think that Stephen A. Smith was one of the people who co-signed him. So he's been kind of doing this soft cooning for a long time, kind of throwing black folks under the bus a little bit in order to get those brownie points with the dominant society, even other black athletes. Because a lot of times when the lottery number of the black athletes come up and then they have to punish the black athletes, Stephen A. Smith is one of those people there wagging his finger. Oh, Chad Ochocinco. He should have known how to act. I'm ashamed of you, Chad Ochocinco. He's one of those type trying to buddy up with the dominant society while they're picking out another black person's lottery number, putting them on blast. Because again, they call Chad's number. He got put on blast because again, if you give an excuse for them to do it, like Chad got into an altercation with his lady, bam. When you get into an altercation, even if it's a minor altercation, and you give the dominant society an excuse to pull your number, that's even worse. But a lot of times, you don't even need to give them an excuse. That's the great thing about white supremacy in their mind. They don't need an excuse to throw you under the bus. They can create an excuse. There was another um, sports guy, another football player, and I talked about this on the show before. The white supremacy lottery called him in. He got cut from his team because of gang ties. They just made up a reason. He grew up in South Central L.A. He had some pictures of some, I think, some people he grew up with. And now this football player is not in the gang, never done anything illegal. He's squeaky clean as a whistle. But then they, they just cut the dude randomly out the blue. And the made up fake outrage reason was that he has gang ties. Again, that's just the white supremacists exercising their white supremacy lottery privilege. And when they do that, and, and they do it to random black people, the sad thing is you have other black people trying to wave their finger at black people whose lottery number has been called. Oh, they shouldn't have did what they did. Oh, shame on you, black person. These are black people talking. And 
black people who do this, they again think that their number won't get called if they buddy up and do the bidding of the dominant society, if they do the bidding of the white supremacists. And black people out there, you are so sadly mistaken if you think that's what's going to go down. If you think black folks, I'm talking to every black person out here, if you think you getting in front of white people or, or white supremacists or suspected white supremacists and talking greasy about black folks, trying to throw black folks under the bus, waving and wagging your finger, reprimanding black people in front of whites. If you think that this is going to remove your number, you are sadly mistaken. That's the biggest mistake black people have been making for the last 500 years. You think that that's going to get the target off you. And it never works. Because now what Stephen A. Smith said recently, he was talking about this football player getting into a domestic um, situation with his lady. And what Stephen A. Smith said was actually, it wasn't bad, wasn't bad at all. What he said was correct. He said, hey, this guy... I mean, there's no excuse for a man to hit a woman. You know, he just went on and on and on and said that. And he also said, well, women also have to be in a position where they're not provoking the situation. Women shouldn't be out here trying to start stuff with dudes, you know, because you don't want to escalate the situation, which makes a lot of sense. But what happened was with Stephen A. Smith, his number was called because there was his colleague, a white lady, Michelle Beadle, who's a, I think she's a commentator on ESPN too. She got into her fake outrage mode. When he made those comments, she reinterpreted his words to say, well, women get beat up because they provoke men. So she went into her white woman victim of the black man mode. The age old white supremacist tactic Oh, I'm just so hurt by what Stephen A. Smith said. I felt so unclean. And she started throwing out all those white women, white supremacist victim terms when it comes to black folks. And then Stephen A. Smith got reprimanded. And what happened was they chopped his nuts off proverbially and put him on television and made him apologize for something he really didn't say. They made this grown ass man get on television and like Dr. Boyce Watkins said, made him look like a little boy and apologize for something he didn't even say and then suspended him for a week. That ain't nothing but good old white supremacy exercising its white supremacist lottery. That's the lottery happening. And again, it happens to a lot of black folks at random, just like Tracy Morgan, Tracy Morgan, the comedian. He was doing a comedy routine. He said some some jokes about gay people. He got reprimanded. They made him come out and apologize. And this is the comedy stage. He's doing jokes. And they made this man apologize for jokes on a comedy stage. The comedy stage has always been sacred. But what they were doing with Tracy Morgan, they picked him randomly because they needed to pay a black person back for Michael Richards. That's another thing. The white supremacist lottery is very vindictive. A lot of times they'll pick random black people as payback. So they were paying Tracy Morgan back for Michael Richards getting on stage and having that meltdown. And Michael Richards got reprimanded and he got thrown under the bus by the whites, not really by black people. A lot of black people called him out, but he got thrown under the bus by whites. But again, the white supremacists said, OK, if one of ours get thrown under the bus. We're going to throw one one of yours under the bus. The difference is Tracy Morgan was telling jokes. Michael Richards, he was on stage. He stopped telling jokes and just went on a damn meltdown. That's what got him in trouble because the thing is when Michael Richards was just running around on stage yelling nigga, for a minute people were sitting around looking for the punchline. We're like, okay, the punchline has to be a doozy. And all he did was just get on the stage and go, nigga, you're a nigga, you're a nigga, you're a nigga, you're a nigga. And people are like, oh, okay, okay. Um, no jokes here. This motherfucker's just having a, a meltdown. But the thing is, see, black people were dealt with as a group. And again, if they can't get one of us, they'll use another one as payback. And the thing is, with Stephen A. Smith, this man has spent years 
kissing up to white people, kissing up to those colleagues at ESPN, talking greasy about black folks. I mean, just being real bold. He's done interviews like, yeah, I said it. And if you don't like what I got to say, y'all can kick rocks. If you don't, I don't give a damn what you like. I say what I want to say. I mean, he's just real bold when it comes to black people. And that's another thing that I don't like. See, that's very cowardly. Criticizing black people, that's the easiest thing you can do. All right. Throwing black folks under the bus is some easy to do shit because there's really no repercussion. Now, in the in the white society, if you criticize black people, you'll get repercussion from other white people because they might not want to stand by you. And some of the corporations will pull back some of their funding. But as far as black people doing something to you, they're not going to black people are not in a in a power position to do anything. You should be. For some reason, black people will not get their money game together, which is what it takes. All you got to do is get your money game together. You can stop all the bullshit. But again, black folks are sitting around waiting on white daddy and white mommy to take care of them. And white mommy and daddy are throwing you under the bus. But the thing is, see, all black people, you got that lottery number on you. And a lot of black people will do things to get that lottery number off of them. You'll point out other black people. Hey, look at him. Don't look at me. Look at him. Get him. I'll help you get him. Just don't pick my number. If I help you get him and if I help you get all of these other black people, will you not pick my number? Can you erase my number? See, that's what black people keep thinking and it doesn't work like that. Even if you have a white mate, some black people are like, hey, I got a white wife and got white family. I got white in-laws. I got mixed kids. Can you remove my number? No. Henry Louis Gates thought that. No, Henry Louis Gates, historian, he does these documentary series. Henry Louis Gates, he always throws that, well, Africans enslaved other Africans. He throws that narrative out there, which is what the white supremacists love to hear. They love to have a black person sit up and talk about how Africans enslaved other Africans. He's been saying that for years, getting all types of funding from the dominant society by not being too hard on the white supremacists, making black people complicit in their own slavery and and servitude and disenfranchisement, playing that little role. And he thought that that number would get erased from him. No, y'all remember they called his number when they went to his house and arrested him for trying to break into his own house. The white supremacist lottery called his number and and pretended they didn't know who he was. They knew who he was. You think those cops out there didn't know that that was that man's house and who he was? You think that they did not know that? They knew that. They wanted to make an example out of him. That's how the white supremacy lottery works. Makes an example out of you. Because see, the thing is, see, there's a code when you throw other black folks under the bus. And that's how the white supremacy lottery works. When they pick a black person's number, the white supremacists and white society, they have a code of conduct as to deal, as to how to deal with black folks when they call their lottery number. When black people are being thrown under the bus, number one, create fake outrage, no matter how small or how minimal it is, That's number one, create the fake outrage by something very minimal. Number two, play naive. Oh, I didn't know that this was this person's house. I didn't know he was Henry Louis Gates. Oh, I didn't know. I thought he was just some random person. You you play naive. Always got to play naive. They got to pretend they don't understand what the person meant and they reinterpret what they mean. That's part of the code. Just like with Stephen A. Smith. Now, what Stephen A. Smith said was not off the wall. It wasn't out of line, but they pretended it was. They pretended he said something that he didn't say, which was women provoke their own abuse. He didn't say that at all, but they pretended he said that. That's part of the code. Another part of the code of the white supremacists. And this is the major part of the code. And a lot of black folks miss this part. 
when the white supremacists are throwing a black person under the bus when their number is called, when their lottery number is up, the code is other white people do not come to that black person's defense at all. That's part of the code. You notice that whenever a white person is throwing a black person under the bus, even if it's very unjust, no other white people comes to that black person's defense. Now with black people, we don't have no code. And whenever there's a white supremacist saying something greasy about black folks, there's always some coons running up, defending the white supremacists. With Donald Sterling, a whole bunch of black people defended Donald Sterling. Clive and Bundy, the, the Nevada rancher who was making his white supremacist comments. A bunch of black people went out and supported him. They speaking up for Clive and oh, he's a good man. Mark Cuban. Mark Cuban made his little slick remarks about black people. Black folks making excuses for Mark Cuban. Right up under him, licking his balls. Paula Deen. When Paula Deen made her comments about black people, a whole line of black people came out and supported Paula Deen. Spoke up and defended Paula Deen. You notice they don't do that when, when it comes to the white supremacists or whites throwing black people under the bus name one white person who has spoken up in defense of Stephen A. Smith think about that has any white person said hey y'all kind of giving Stephen A. Smith a hard time has anyone said that you notice they haven't said that even during the whole and I, and I talked about this before the whole Trayvon Martin trial Nobody came out really talking greasy about Zimmerman in, in defense of Trayvon Martin. Very few, I think, a few lawyers, but, but most people in the dominant society, they didn't come out really talking greasy about Zimmerman, especially the people who knew him. That's part of the code. When a black person's thrown under the bus, white people don't come out and defend you and say, hey, what you're doing to him is unjust. No, he didn't say that. No, wait, come on, man. Y'all y'all making a mountain out of a molehill. He didn't say that. He didn't do that. You don't see white people doing that when another white person is throwing a black person under the bus. That's part of the white code. The code is you back them up and you don't interfere. The white supremacist code is to turn and look the other way as if you don't know what's happening. They did that when black people got lynched. When black people got lynched, you notice a lot of the people who did the lynching, they got away with it because all of the people who wasn't even there, who knew about it, they kept their mouth shut. That was part of the code. When a black person is being sacrificed, you keep your mouth shut. You don't say nothing. You don't interfere. You don't come forward. None of that stuff. You just... Go along with the program, act like you don't know what's happening, keep your mouth shut, and, and, and just let it happen. Remember, no white people even spoke up for Skip Gates when he was thrown under the bus. White people didn't speak up for him. When Clarence Thomas, when his, his lottery number was called back in the 90s, he was throwing black folks under the bus, and then they called his white the white supremacist lottery came through on him and they put him on trial for sexual harassment. White people didn't come to Clarence Thomas' defense. So we got to understand how the game works. We got to understand this game and this game is real. And the thing is, the white supremacists, they set black people up to make them isolate themselves. See, they got Stephen A. Smith. They put him out there and had him talking greasy about black folks throwing other black folks under the bus and they're, they're encouraging him to do that and when you do that you become more vulnerable and again he made the mistake that black people have been, been making for the last 500 years black people in Africa that was the first mistake black people made they thought when the European um, white supremacists came to conquer there was some African people from different tribes who said okay well look if you leave me alone I'll help you get some of those other people from those other tribes that we don't really have a connection with. If you leave me alone, I'll help you get some of those guys because I see you you about to get somebody. So don't get me, I'll help you. And when black people did that in Africa, 
pointing out those other tribes that they really didn't have a connection with. They already had beef. What happened was not only did the Europeans get those other tribes and other captives, the person who pointed those other captives out, they said, okay, well, look, you need to get on that boat too. We're taking you too. We're not letting you go. And they, they didn't let anybody go. They got everybody eventually. So that's the thing that black folks don't get. Throwing other black folks under the bus is not going to remove your lottery number. Your number can still get called, and that's the message that happened with Stephen A. Smith. They sent Stephen A. Smith a message, and they sent a message with Stephen A. Smith. You know what they said? The message is from the white supremacists? Their message is that we're willing to throw our coons under the bus, too. Because right now, we're in a position in white supremacist society where we don't even need the coons no more. The coons are helpful, but now we got black people in a position of such weakness, we don't even need the coons. So you you can kiss our ass for years and years and years, and we'll still throw you under the bus. That was the message that was being sent with Stephen A. Smith. It ain't got nothing to do with domestic violence and all that. None of that. That's a smokescreen. If all of these people were so concerned about domestic violence and violence against women, they'd they stop it. There's so much more they can do. This was about putting a Negro in his place. That was about making a Negro bow down and making an example out of him. Even their coons. We're making an example out of our coons. Like, look at this nigga. He kisses our ass every day and look what we did to him. So all you other Negroes better be in line. That's the message they were sending. And another thing, they do that because a lot of times the coons, they have to call the lottery number of the coons because a lot of times the coons get a little comfortable. Because sometimes the white supremacists, they're very observant of black folks. And when you have black people who throw other black people under the bus for you, sometimes those type of black people get a little bit too comfortable around white folks. Sometimes the white supremacists are looking at people like Stephen A. Smith like, okay, he, he, he does a lot of good work for us. He makes us a lot of money. He keeps the other niggers in line. But I don't know. He's getting a little arrogant when he's around us. He's looking me in my eye a little too long. He's walking around with a little bit too much pep in his step when he comes around us. He's getting a little too comfortable around us. He's getting a little arrogant around us because we accept him for so long. He might start thinking he's one of us. So we might have to just remind him of exactly who he is and what his position is. It's time for us to put him in his place. And it don't take much for them to put you in your place. They can make up a reason at any arbitrary moment. And that's what that was about. That was about putting Stephen A. Smith in his place. Just to let him know, nigga, you, you getting comfortable, but you don't, don't get too comfortable. You're not one of us now. Let, let's put you back in your place and we're going to send that message out to other, all the niggers. That's all that was. Because all of the Michelle Beatles, all these people, that fake ass outrage. And again, the white supremacist female is the worst. I've talked about them many times. The white supremacist female, that's, she plays her position. She goes out there and does that whole victim thing. That's an old Jim Crow trick. They've always used the white female as the catalyst to castrate literally and symbolically to castrate the black male. And that's what they did. They symbolically castrated Stephen A. Smith on television as a message to all the other negras because again if all of these people were so concerned about violence towards women why aren't any of these people talking about all of these white male police officers who are shooting and beating the brakes off black women black women are getting beat up by cops left and right late recently in the last few weeks, so many cops have beat up black women and choked them out the whole nine. None of these people have said anything about that if you were so concerned about violence against women. So people pick and choose their fake outrage. So we got to understand how the white supremacist game work and understand that the white supremacist lottery is real and they can pick you at random. You're not exempt from the white supremacist lottery, black folks. When you understand that part of the game, your life would be much smoother and easier. You can operate better. You can be more thorough.
But again, when black folks are getting beat up and, and stomped out, those in the dominant society, they abide by that code. They keep that code of silence. They turn the other cheek. Because again, when black people, especially black women out here getting beat up and punched in the face and they got MMA moves that these white cops are doing on black women out here, the white supremacists are using their code of conduct by remaining silent, turning around and pretending they ain't seeing nothing. When you have this blatant form of violence happening to women every day, people turn the other cheek, but a man speaks about violence and all of a sudden everybody's outraged. Bullshit. That's the white supremacy lottery popping off and black folks, you need to be in a position to financially protect yourselves from that. That's why black folks, we need a code of conduct. I said that early in today's show. We got to get a code of conduct. All that anything goes loosey goosey shit that happens with black folks. Got to cut that out. We need a code of conduct. That code of conduct should be our leadership. And we're going to have to discuss that on some more shows. And I'm, I'm probably going to have to get out here on the road and we're going to have to talk about establishing a code of conduct within the black community so we can start building and protect ourselves from the white supremacy lottery. Because again, they have in the white supremacy lottery drawings every day. And every one of you black person, people out there listening, your number can be called at any given moment. So do not ever get it twisted. And don't think that buddying up and sucking up to the white supremacists is going to get your number removed. It ain't going to get removed, and Stephen A. Smith is a great example of that. Yo, everybody, that's been today's episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at Tariq Nasheed. Follow me on Instagram, at Tariq Elite. I'm going to holler at you guys on um, Ustream this Sunday. And go to HiddenColorsFilm.com to get the movie Hidden Colors. No bootleg. Holler.